That was so quick, so efficient. That was perfect. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to some more gameplay. That's right, we are going to try and double up today. This time jumping into standard though, the first video was historic. We're going to try and do some standard today. If you do want to check out that historic video, I'll put a little annotation up there at the top so you can go check that one out. Also, just a quick heads up, if you would like to subscribe, like this video, anything like that, please feel free to do so. It really does help us out a lot, but I thought I'd try something a little bit different. So. Uh, normally when I go to look for decks, I either take a suggestion from our amazing Discord community who produces quite a number of awesome deck lists, or I go to Aetherhub and look at just random lists and find something that I feel is really interesting or create something myself uh, and, and just kind of play around. I'm not the best deck builder in the world, so I like to see what other people are doing, and that's okay. Um, but today, I thought I would try and actually look at the meta breakdown and see what the better decks in Standard are right now. And at the top of the list, according to Aetherhub, is this Naya list. Now, this is a Winota deck, uh, and as such, does feature the Winota plus blade historian combo if you don't know how this works essentially anytime a non-human creature you control attacks look at the top six cards of your deck uh put a human creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking uh and that creature gains indestructible until the end of the turn so the idea is we attack in with things like uh these little you know cheapo non-human creatures to be able to get some bigger humans out things like uh minsk uh, Beloved Ranger, a very interesting card. We've got Elite Spellbinder, which is quite good. Blade Historian, which d basically gives everything double strike, is absolutely huge. And then, of course, Kenrith as well. Some very, very good cards. Uh, all the early game stuff, we've got Selfless Savior for Indestructible, a little bit of Ramp with the Sentinel, uh, Ramp with Lotus Cobra, Prosperous Innkeeper, Ramp and Life Gain, Ranger Class, some all-out power long-term. Uh, Shatter Skull Smashing is in here as a removal spell slash land as we need it. And then, of course, all the big game-winning things. Now, Asika's Chariot is another way to go with this list. It's very, very good. Uh, can copy a lot of the tokens that we produce, which is quite awesome as well. Uh, and is just really, really strong in the early game, especially if we can ramp into it. So, very interesting list. I haven't given it much of a, a test run yet. I've only played one game, but I'm very excited to try this one out. This does come with a full sideboard, so that will be included in the description, but we're not going to see that have any use today. Uh, we are keeping this to best of one. So, let's go ahead. We'll jump into three games. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one, and this is about as great a hand as we could start with. We've got a nice one into two, and technically three if we can get a third land untapped, specifically a red land, we can get the Minsk down as well. Um, but regardless, nice little start here. Uh, I guess technically we guarantee a three into if uh, with this Prosperous Innkeeper, so something to keep in mind. This makes turn three a lot easier uh, in a deck with Fabled Passage, because this does produce a treasure token that we can then, of course, utilize uh, to, to get whatever color we need to get. So I do like that quite a lot. Let's go ahead and get this down. Uh, do we want to offer the trade here? Um, you know what? I'm going to try it. Uh, this gets out of hand very quickly. I doubt that they're going to block with it, so I feel like it's safe to go ahead and attack in with it. Uh, if they do try and remove it, we could, of course, just give the innkeeper indestructible. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yes, fair enough. Oh, a Winota. That would have been really good. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and then they're going to mill four cards here. Hopefully, oh, another Winota. So sad. Uh, mill is obviously a big hit against us. We're going to do the best we can, but that's a very scary thing to uh, to be up against here. Uh, interesting. So we can actually double up a little bit here, um, which I think we're going to do. So I'm going to Lotus Cobra. Uh, that's going to gain us a life. And then here, what we can do is just play this, or we can do this. Yeah, I think we'll do this just to be safe, I suppose. Uh, that'll produce red. We do need to make sure we get red, green, and white. So we do need to get either green or white with the next Lotus Cobra trigger. Uh, so let's do that, and then we can go ahead and play this. Fantastic. Uh, that's at least 
a power creature on the field for sure. And then here we can just go ahead and attack him with all three since they only have the zero four. Uh, we are gonna have to do the best we can to outpace them here. That's a very scary thing to do given that they've got uh, a lot of mill action. Uh, so we're gonna have to get around that somehow. We'll see how that goes. We do have the selfless savior though. So that is gonna provide indestructible to something as we need it, uh, sure. Target creature. Oh, there's the Winota. Uh, okay. Um, so I assume we just go for it here, right? Like that's probably just the best thing we can do. Yeah. Awesome. And we got it. Guys, we did it. That was so quick, so efficient. That was perfect. All right. That's what we're hoping to do every single time. We've got two more games though. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. That first game, extraordinarily fast. Uh, this one is a very interesting keep. Uh, I am going to keep it because of the innkeeper. I feel like it's safe to say that we can keep it, uh, but it is going to be a bit of a tricky one, depending on what the opponent's doing here. I'm going to lead on the mountain. That saves us. If we draw a forest, we don't necessarily have to play this as the green. We can just play the forest and then use that later as we need to. Um, but it looks like that is not going to be the case this time. Now we're actually a little punished uh, because uh, if you control two or more other lands, this comes into play tapped, which is a little sad, but uh, that's okay. We'll see what we can do this coming turn. If we can draw a, an untapped land, uh, we could actually just drop Winota and then get in for an attack, hopefully pulling something, but it looks like they're going to try and kill this now. Yeah, and that's fine. That's not great for us, obviously, but it is fine. Uh, hmm. I mean, we could certainly just play Winota, uh, which is not a bad play. Uh, alternatively, we can drop. I don't really we need to. Yeah, OK, I think we need to just go ahead and play the Winota here. Um, the reason being, uh, this gets around quite a lot of standard burn, uh, not everything of course, but it does get around quite a bit. And then if we can get like, um, I don't know, uh, we need a white source. That's the only problem right now is we really need a white source and we just don't have it. Uh, we'll do the best we can though. We'll see what we can do. I have hope. Opponent just going to be playing a Windscarred Crag. That's fine. Uh, this is going to be a much rougher game, obviously, than the first one. OK, uh, that's definitely a good card. Let's get that going. <clears throat> it's a playable card for sure, so I'm all too happy to play that one out. We'll, of course, get in there with Winota here. Uh, they're, I assume, just going to shock that. Sure. Uh, let's get in for four. And now I'm assuming we're going to be facing at least one Bone Crusher Giant here. Uh, what we can do, though, is level this up and then that way uh, they can't efficiently at least block it, uh, which seems like a really good play. Uh, oh, there's a selfless savior as well. Unfortunately, still not a white source, though. Kind of unfortunate. Uh, let's go ahead and attack in. We'll put a f get a counter here. That's going to attack for five. That's quite good. Uh, let's see what we can do, guys. I have hope. Uh, Oh, they have a Winota of their own. OK, a uh, little scary then little scary. This is a much less interactive build in the sense that we don't run as many uh, burn spells or anything like that as you might see, like in this uh, kind of lore hold version of the list. Um, but regardless, still very, very cool. OK, um, unfortunately, we can't do anything else. So we're just going to throw this out there and uh, we are going to attack in. There's nothing else to do, really. We could have held up. Uh, but I mean, we're pretty dead regardless, I think. Uh, so it's okay. Yeah, they have double strike here. So well done opponent. They got us. That is okay. Very, very quick game. Let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump into game three. Let's see if we can get one more win with this one. All right, guys, here we are for our third and final game with this Winota Ni or Naya Winota deck. Uh, this is a great hand, a nice one too into Winota. Very easy keep. Um, unfortunately, I will. I, I just wanted to point out the attack on the last turn of the last game. Definitely the wrong move, but it did not matter in the end. They would have been able to kill us regardless. So I uh, at first I was like, oh, no, we messed up. And then my head was like, ah, it doesn't matter. We would have lost anyway. So it's OK that we did it the way we did it. Um, little scared to see what they could have here. This might be just the oh, OK, very interesting. Oh, I like that. Um, all right, so let's do this. We'll play out that Prosperous Innkeeper here. Uh, that's going to give us a treasure token. I think we just pass then. Um, 
I guess we could have played another Sentinel here, which wouldn't have been a bad idea. It just would have given us another trigger for the Winota. So that actually could have been a better play. Uh, but we're going to have to take three and get this Shatter Skull smashing down. Um, so I'll leave it a package. Okay, that's fine. They're going to venture into the dungeon. This is obviously the, uh, the dungeon deck. This does have Death Touch, so we're not going to block it. Uh, just want to be safe. Be very, very safe. Uh, let's do this. We're going to pay the three. And we're going to play out Winota and go for it here, guys. There's no reason not to. All too happy to trade either one of these off if uh, if we can get something really good off the top here. That's a nice elite spellbinder. Uh, and what do we get out of the hand? Uh, that does hit some stuff in our deck. Um, hmm. All of these seem bad for us. Uh, I think it's gonna just be the knight here though. Uh, and then let's see what we can get, another Winota. Yeah, I will go ahead and do that though because then it can go in and attack uh, and it does have indestructible. So we get a pretty good hit in, in here and the opponent just gives up immediately. Wow, okay, what a fast series of games. Uh, well, let's chat about this list. That might have been the, the fastest series of games I think I have ever played. That was ridiculously quick. Guys, we got two out of three of the games. The second game, unfortunately, did get a little bit mana screwed there. We could have done a little better if we had had a white source. Unfortunately, we only had the treasure token, which wasn't really enough to get us where we needed to be. And I do think I could have probably played slightly better there and maybe done something slightly different. But regardless, still a, a, an amazingly powerful deck. If you haven't played with Winota before, I have in some different circumstances, but I hadn't tested this version of the list yet, uh, and it's very worth it. It's a very, very good list, extraordinarily strong and resilient as well. Being able to double up on a lot of things very, very quickly is obviously hugely powerful. The only thing you do need to worry about, of course, counter spells, sweepers, removal spells, the normal gambit of stuff anytime you play a creature deck. Uh, the good thing is this outpowers them very, very quickly, so even if you get to a position where you've got a lot of stuff on board, they sweep. Uh, I do... I, I would suggest at least that in a lot of circumstances you might be able to recover fairly quickly because you've already dealt so much damage to the opponent in a single turn that you might be able to get the last few points in relatively quickly. Uh, I would play around with some different interactive spells. I think we did see a Bone Crusher Giant version in the Lorehold set of this uh, this Winota list. And I do think that that's worthwhile testing out because I think it gives you a little bit more resilience. It's a little less aggro-y in certain circumstances um, because you do want to play the the burn spells early on to then clear the way for the Winota but uh I I think being able to just power out as many creatures as you can is probably the way I would play it which is why this version works so well in my opinion but regardless guys very very fun I hope you guys enjoyed it please leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe if you are not already but guys if you would like to see more gameplay let me know if you've got a deck idea down below I would love to hear it give us a link do something like that I would love to see what you guys can come up with until then guys thank you so much I will see you in another gameplay video very soon